Ah, the last member of the G1 series for me to unbox. This is the G1 Gorilla. So we've already done the Assassin and the Sniper. This is the most value-oriented of the G1 series boards, although they're not really value boards. These are performance gaming boards, but this is the least expensive of the lot of them. And let's get started. It comes with a three-year warranty in the US and Canada. It supports Intel Core i7 processors on LGA 1366. So that is 920s, 930s, 940s, 950s, 960s, 970s, 980Xs, and 990Xs. Yes, that includes Extreme Edition. Okay, it has the Intel X58 chipset. It includes an XFi built-on sound card, as well as a Killer E2100 gaming networking card. So those are pretty good values, considering the fact that you do not have to now buy an add-in network card, or in theory, an add-in sound card, because the add-in sound card not only has an X5 processor, but also a built-in front audio headphone amp, which is pretty sweet, as well as high-end audio capacitor. So this is pretty important, because I've always been a huge advocate of better onboard features such as, say for example, sound and networking, and it's good to see somebody moving in that direction. All right, so we've got the Bigfoot Networks, uh, killer game networking platform. We have a front access control panel. Let's see, SATA 3, 6 gigabit per second, USB 3, locked and loaded heat pipe design, which we'll have a closer look at later. Five smart fan connectors, which can be easily controlled with the EasyTune 6 software. It includes ultra durable 3, maximum CPU power, and, oh, there we go, dual BIOS with 3 plus terabyte hard drive support. A super site. What's a super site? With multiple GPU, uh, delivers maximum FPS, allowing gamers to see more clearly, aim faster, and move more quickly. Okay. Oh, okay. Basically, they're just saying it has support for up to three-way SLI and three-way Crossfire X. That's what they mean by super site. All right, so when we open up the box, we find some Digicam. And then put the box there so it can pose there and look sweet. And then we'll pull out the G1 Gorilla itself. Okay. See, after all this, I was expecting an ape-themed board. Nah, I'm just kidding. That's a different kind of gorilla. Okay, here we go. So we got a poster, first thing. This poster would look pretty sweet on my wall. It's got a skull and some weaponize yourself stuff and on the back there's a target of a guy it's already conveniently got bullet holes in it so you won't have to bother shooting at the target next we have some stickers g1 killer bullet hole stickers bullet stickers some more g1 killer stickers more bullets and more bullet holes all right we've got that convenient usb 3.0 front panel a uh, three and a half inch guy that connects to an internal USB 3 header. Since most cases these days still don't have front USB 3 via a header, that's an awesome feature. Here we've got a three way SLI bridge. We have a two way SLI bridge, as well as uh, four SATA cables, uh, two straight and two right angle. Go ahead and put that there. We also have a user's manual with a drivers and utilities DVD. Download the latest off the Gigabyte website rather than using that. We have a multilingual installation guidebook as well as an IO shield that looks pretty cool because it says G1 Killer on the back. It's not color coded, but it's black, so it looks better. So, you know, you, you got to make your you got to make a judgment call there. Do you prefer a good looking back panel or do you prefer a labeled one? It all comes down to whether you can find out where things plug into without the color coding or whether looks are important to you and all that stuff. Personally, I prefer the black one just because I have no problem finding my USB ports. Um, I know what they look like. And since the USB 3.0 ones are color coded blue inside the connector anyway, that's not a big deal either. So let's go ahead, close the box here, and let's have a look at the G1 Gorilla itself. So one of the first things I notice about this board versus its bigger brothers is that it doesn't have as many power phases. So this is only looks like an 8 plus 2 phase power design for the 1366 socket. It's still a sweet looking board and it has a very similar looking cooling um, system. So why don't we do, yeah, let's do cooling first. So you got your barrel of a pistol thing going on here. 
Then you've got uh, all of these LEDs light up and look cool and this says gaming motherboard on it. So this looks really good and then you've got your uh, magazine right here with a bullet sticking out of it. As well as a helpful warning. Not a weapon, cannot be assembled as a firearm, so please be aware of that. You may not recycle this board once it's, you know, old and slow and make a gun out of it. It doesn't work that way. All right, at the top left, we've got an 8-pin power connector. Moving over, we've got our CPU fan connector. We've got six DDR3 slots supporting triple channel DDR3. Our 24-pin power connector is in its ideal location along the right-hand edge of the board. Moving down some more. We've got our SATA connectors, so there are six SATA 2 3 gigabit per second connectors and two SATA 3 6 gigabit per second connectors. Here is our Southbridge heatsink, which we've already looked at. There's our Northbridge heatsink, MOSFET heatsink. I don't think I ever said what they were cooling before. Front panel connectors are here. We've also got three front USB headers. We've got one front USB 3.0 header, another fan. We've got our front audio connector in its ideal location along the bottom left. Not here where we used to often find them on Gigabyte motherboards. Our PCI slot layout is fairly ideal looking. Let me have a look at what these are. Okay, so it looks like what we got here is 16x, 16x, 8x. Now the way I would probably use this board if I was to use it in my personal system is I'd throw one of my cards in here, I'd throw my other one in here taking that bandwidth hit because it actually doesn't affect performance and that would leave me with a 16x slot and a 1x slot for any additional expansion cards. This is a standard size motherboard Although it's a touch wider than standard ATX, it should fit in most standard ATX cases, but it doesn't have any additional length like the XL ATX G1 Assassin does. Here is our built-in uh, creative sound card, so you can see here it's actually isolated where on the PCB all of those components are located, so that's where you're going to get better sound quality from. We've got uh, also the headphone amplifier is built into that particular part of the board. Here's our killer E2100 with its dedicated cache, so that's going to take care of the Ethernet capabilities of this motherboard. Here on the back we will find two PS2 ports, one for the keyboard, one for the mouse, optical audio as well as coaxial audio out, an OC button which as you may or may not be able to figure out based on the name of it, will OC your board, that is overclock your board. Alright, we've got, wow, looks like uh, two USB eSATA combo ports, I love those, those are awesome. We've got uh, four more just plain USB 2 ports two USB 3 ports. This is a great mix actually of USB to eSATA ports. Fantastic because you can do lots of external devices, you can do lots of USB 2, all that good stuff. We've got a gigabit Ethernet as well as 7.1 audio and uh, nothing much to say about the back of the board except that it has a matte black PCB which every single motherboard in the world should have because it looks great. Just want to give Gigabyte kudos for this. They've done such a good job of improving the overall look and feel of their boards versus their last generation stuff. I mean, I bought an uh, EX58 Extreme back when it first launched. So this was their first X58 high-end board. And I actually ended up getting rid of it to change out for something that had a very similar color scheme to this, even though I knew it was an inferior board. It was a DFI... Uh, T3H8 or something along those lines. So uh, yeah, if I'd had one of these, I definitely would have just kept it. Thanks for checking out this unboxing of the G1 Gorilla. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. And never look directly down the barrel of a gun. It's a really bad idea. Fortunately, this isn't a gun. It's just a heatsink. So just relax.